No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with an entity, an icon, a viral behemoth. What does that mean? It's like a beast. I wouldn't call myself a beast. I'm like a like princess and a frog type of dude. In what way? Like the princess gave you a kiss and you turned into a a, a frog or a, nah, what, what frog. happened? Did the the frog? No, nah, it's into like a... the frog is. Un... You know what? I'm like Donkey and Shrek. You feel me? I never seen Shrek. What? I know. Old. So basically, it's about a donkey that get in. Like basically, don't might want to with him. Then uh-huh. he finds somebody else that the Shrek. Nobody want to with Shrek, but when they come together, they realize they can be fuckable with. Mm. Yeah. So the big green monster joins forces with the donkey. Yeah. Then he find like a little. Uh, he find a little. Uh, somebody. He finds another princess, and he realizes inside she just like him. And then, but somebody else try to knock her. He knock her, and then they end up having babies. So the lesson for kids is like you can be ugly and disgusting and still impregnate some hot chick. I wouldn't necessarily say that. It would just be more about like everything that glitter ain't gold. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But that's why we do what we do is so we can impregnate some hot chicks, really. I mean, but definition, what's your hot? Because I had a girl tell me I was medium ugly and I was like, what the fuck is that? And she was just like, you there. But I'm saying I'm I'm looking at you. I'm looking in the mirror this morning. I don't think either of us is fucking Tyson Beckford. Let's be totally honest. But what if somebody think he ugly? Then they're nuts. I mean, <laughs> we ain't safari. Who that? You know, Safari? Nicki Minaj's ex boyfriend. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking about the web browser. <laughs> well, we're not that either. Yeah. We're actually way more like him than we are the web browser. In the that episode we are, started? We are people. Yeah. Was... <laughs> we already in this shit, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is oh. good. This is good. Oh. This is the kind of shit I'm into. Okay. What else you here to? Oh, man. There's a lot. What do you like to do besides <laughs> this? You're going you're gonna to freak out. What do you like to do? Should I tell you about my boring hobbies or should I tell you about my I mean, because spicy hobbies? I'm just saying it might be boring to you, but it might be exciting to me. You got to promise you're not going to make the whole interview about this. All right, let's get it. So me and my girl have a podcast where we interview girls and then we fuck them afterwards. So it's kind of like, so you a stepdaddy. <laughs> you step in a day, you step in right into the life to be a daddy or papa. I'm trying not to be a dad to anyone besides my kid i'm actually like very concerned with not busting a nut in any of these chicks Mm -hmm. that would be a whole thing i mean what's really fucking if you're just going y'all use condoms hell no oh you ever seen a porno with a condom no i haven't it's crazy right (laughs) i don't want to see that i'll turn it off yeah it's crazy back back button it's it's a threesome because the condom involved when's the last time you wore a condom you wearing condoms yeah i wear condoms damn yeah I got to. Even if I didn't, I'm going to say I wear them. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. I don't lying. really wear them, but I'm going to say it on the podcast. <laughs> right, you got to say that. Why is it called No Jumper? You never talk about basketball. Whoosh. Uh, Gucci Mane. 95 Air Max because I'm a dope runner. Balling like an athlete but got no jumper. He talked about basketball, though. Well, he's actually saying that he doesn't play basketball or that he's not good at it at least. But the show is called No Jumper, but you don't talk about basketball. No, but I'm trash at basketball. So why don't you talk about basketball? I am not terribly interested in it. Although, to be honest, I do find it interesting. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I really got like enough brain power to like keep tabs on 30 teams. Mm-hmm. So You, if you pay I'm attention in, to that? Yeah. If I'm in second place, you pass me up. What place you in? First. Wow. <laughs> How y'all guys doing, y'all? This is Funny Marco, and we are no jumper today. I had to think about it for a little bit there. What? You know, it's interesting with you that you got funny as, as the beginning of your name. You know what? I got that name. I was at the gas station, and my mm. name Marco. You was like, you that Funny Marco motherfucker. Mm. So I'm like, God, really, honestly, when I turn 40, I don't want people calling me that. I really, I hate that name now. Right. But it was cool. Some shit be cool when you're young, but when you get older, it's sticky with you. That's why Bow Wow took off Little Bow Wow. Right. But to me, it just looks like an Instagram name because it's a good name. If you're 
uh, trying to get followers on Instagram, having yeah. like the the first word of your name be the thing that you but, want people to follow you based on is pretty good. But if you put not funny, they probably be like, damn, why is he saying that? And they go to your page. Mm. Uh huh. It's a hypocopically. <laughs> Y'all know what that mean? Hypocopoly? Yeah. Let me get this merch. Let's see what you rock with. I got you. Yeah, it's my mindset. Uh, hoodies. I got one on now. And okay. I haven't uh, dropped it yet. So it's like really with mindset, it's like I, you like it? It's I do. Too. Mindset. It's a mindset thing. Yeah. And these are available where on your website? A name came out yet. So like oh, the first okay. one, because so I got to still. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. It's thick too. So you can fuck them in that. Shout I ain't out got to the you for tag. thinking that I would rock a medium. Yeah. I mean, not I, even I could do a large, but because oh, yeah. you know, some, you might want your belly out or something. If, if you give me this, I'm going to give it to my girl because I, I can't rock oh, a That's medium. cool. That's why I really wanted you to give it I'm to I'm an her. XL kind of guy. Well, okay, no, we, we do that. Yeah, yeah. Basically, because when you have a hoodie and then girls be taking them anyway. Right. Right. So I'm I, at the point, though, where I just get too many hoodies. Yeah. My closet, I have to constantly be trying to take stuff out and be like, all right, I'm going to give this to charity. I'm yeah. going to give this to the guys at the office. But do you really give it to them? The in charity? the office? Charity. Uh, I put it in a pile, and I'm pretty sure that that's what my housekeeper does with it. So when you say pretty sure, that means you're unsure. I have no idea. She could be selling it to Buffalo Exchange for all I know. Right. So let's get this. Who was you growing up? Like, what made you get into this? Like, what was going to be like? What did you want to do? I was a BMX rider for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of just, like, transitioned into me interviewing mm -hmm. rappers and funny Marcos and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So why are you trying to make this about me? This is like this is like a defense thing where you like you're you're scared. I'm gonna ask you a bunch of in depth questions, so you're like woof. I'm gonna turn it. I don't on think you. you you ain't got nothing crazy to ask me. No, right not really. I was trying. I was trying. Yeah, to you ain't online. got nothing crazy. I couldn't crazy. find anything. Too Only messy. thing that's weird as fuck is said that I was married online. I'm like, bro, and then girls be like, oh, you got a wife? I'm like, I couldn't afford no wedding ring. Like yeah, right. I was never. You got married. seven thousand dollars for a, a dog post on your Instagram, at least once. I just heard you talk about that in some random interview. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you can afford. No, nah, but I'm saying like, I'm saying at the time, they said before I got where I was right. getting. Cause I used to work jobs and shit. I got fired from Popeye's. Right. And Walmart? Yeah, that too. Right. They, they basically, you know, when price matching was up, I used to price oh, yeah. match my people's shit lower. And they was, I was like, don't tell nobody. And then they pulled me in the office. They was just like. Oh, you price matching people? Should I said, who told y'all? They was like, you got your own camera. How do you price match with Popeyes? Uh, no, Walmart. I was oh, price matching Walmart, people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you ring up there. Yeah, yeah. And I was ringing up TVs for 50 bucks, 60 oh, okay, inches. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I sold shoes at Sears and I did that for a while. Mm -hmm. I was like helping out. Just anybody who seemed cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's 40% here's off these shoes. Right. That's not cool. What was it like working at Popeyes? How long did you work there? Uh, I worked there for like two years. It was actually cool. Uh, one time I had masturbated because I was working so much. <laughs> you masturbated where? In the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> and they had, I forgot it was hot season and I wanted a chicken and that shit got to me. So you had a spicy dick? Like yeah. your dick felt hot? It was hot and spicy. The hot chicken at Popeye's is not that hot, in my opinion. But if I say that you think people going to stop eating at Popeye's and they going to come after me or something? No, I mean, I feel like, I mean, people like Popeye's so much that even if they knew that some percentage of the employees, I mean, we all know that. We all know some percentage of the employees at any fast food place are jerking off and not washing their hands. Yeah. It's just bound to happen. Yeah, because like I said, at the end of the day, who really want to cook? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's such a shitty job that you just feel like it's your right to masturbate. Hmm. Like, I got to do anything I can do to make this a better experience for me. Yeah, I'm actually done masturbating, though. You quit? Yeah, I just feel like it, it takes away from sex sometimes. No, it doesn't. It makes it way better. No, it don't. Yes, it does. How? Because, listen, if I haven't busted a nut in a couple of days and I fuck my girl, I'm going to last about two minutes. Okay, but. If I jerk off in the morning and then I hit it later in the day, I got a nice 20, 30 minutes in me because I fucking cleaned the pipes out to start the day. But is the sex really about you or her? No, it's about both of us. I don't think you're a both of us type of guy. Because Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're not. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't think you treat your wife like a person. No, it's just about you, and she got to realize that. No, it's okay to say that. For me, if I bust a nut in two minutes, I mean, whatever. Like, if anything, that just leaves more time for me to watch TikTok on my phone, right? But if I'm fucking her, she presumably is not going to enjoy it that much unless you last longer than two minutes, right? 
But it's hard for me to believe you when you say for me. Any person, any person that say for me and point at themselves have doubt of lying, and you're trying to pursue me to believe you by actions and moving your hands. What is the thing you think I'm lying about? You said for me that you actually do sex for you though. Sex is really for it's you. It's about both of us. No, it's not. He don't <laughs> care. Rural, he doesn't care. <laughs> if it was just about me, then I would be fucking prostitutes on the side of the road wherever they're at. Mm, no, you still got standards. Mm, I'll pretty much do whoever. <laughs> Even people that are sitting in chairs? Of course. What? You never banged a handicap? Uh, I'm saying I was like, no couches though, right? The main thing I got from studying the great civil rights leaders of our time is that discrimination is wrong. I wonder who was the first person that was just like, let's fuck. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I almost feel like you probably might not believe in evolution. I don't, some shit, I don't, if I don't know how to spell it, I don't even know shit about it. But I'm just saying... That before we were humans, when we were like some kind of pre-human creature, we were fucking the shit out of each other. Before we realized like, oh, this could be this fun thing. Like the way we think about sex is very far removed from mm. the biological purpose of sex. Mm. Hey, do you want your packs to stand out? Well, our sponsor, BrandMyDispo.com, is here to save your boring packaging and take your brand to the next level. You can create your own custom bags, boxes, jars, and much more. Join over 50,000 brands who trust our friends over at BrandMyDispo with our exclusive offer. You go to BrandMyDispo.com and you use the code NOJUMPER, all one word. You will save $50 and get free shipping on your first order of custom packaging for your packs. Every time we launch a new product, we use custom packaging to stand out. Brandmydispo.com is changing the game with one of a kind packaging. Shout out brandmydispo.com. Go to brandmydispo and use our code no jumper for $50 off your first purchase. Let's go. I really feel like they should sell it in stores. Sex? Yeah. A little kit. I mean, that pocket. I mean, pussies. you can buy food because when you're hungry and like your needs are in stores. So if you're horny, why can't you go buy that? Well, I agree. That's fucked up. And that's why you end up with an illegal prostitution marketplace. Yeah, but I'm saying at Walmart, you should be able to go in there and buy some. You ever been to Amsterdam? No, I haven't. You need a passport, don't you? Yes. I need to get one. It's in a different country, so yes. But you been? Yeah, so you walk down the street in this one area, the red light district, and there's all these booths that are just mm -hmm. like glass little booths, and it'll be just a bunch of prostitutes sort of pawing at but it. But why are you calling prostitutes? Because that's what they're doing. They're selling their bodies for money. I would, uh, I wouldn't call them prostitutes. Yeah, if you don't, if you're not concerned with the literal dictionary definition of the word. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that word is so hot, like hot, like so mean. Well, I mean, it's not like it's actually legal there, and it's not really looked down upon that much. Okay, what else we can call them? Hookers? That's way mean. No, that's no. I wouldn't call them that. I just call them like uh, uh, pleasure makers. Sex workers, but that's not no, really that no, descriptive. No, 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 no. Pleasure makers. But they anyone make... could be a pleasure maker. Not anybody. The guy at McDonald's is a pleasure maker. I'm getting a ton of pleasure out of that burger he's making me. I mean, who he makes Donalds? Well, okay, fine. I'm not going. Are you Donald's. sponsored by them? Whole you shouldn't foods. even. You give them free promotion. Whole Foods. Okay. They're pleasure makers. I get pleasure when I go in there. It's not really that descriptive. Right, but it's people that. Probably haven't had sex in like years and they just happy with they sell. Yeah, that's good. Right. What, what does that have to do with their prostitutes? I don't think you get where I'm coming from. Do you do this with other things too? Like a drug dealer is not a drug dealer, they're a, a pleasure maker. I wouldn't call them a drug because it's a drug dealer like dealing. Like when you're dealing something, you multiple people. Drug dealer, like Doesn't car dealer. You, yes, I, I can start a business and deal to one person, and that's the whole nature of my business. That's no, making a deal. No, I could just sell to to one person over and over and over. I right. have a I have a cornfield, and there's one guy who comes over and he buys corn from me. I'm, a, I'm a corn dealer. I only right, have one no, client. No, because y'all made that deal, and now that deal is over. Now y'all just doing no, no. transactions. He comes every day. No, but that's still not making a deal because a deal is when you're talking and you're trying to debate about something. Yeah. Now we made a deal. Once you've done a deal, you can continue to do the deal. So you're telling me if you deal. hire me for $10 and I keep working for you, we're still making deals. It's done. That's different. What? Because when, when the guy comes to buy corn from me, every day we make an additional deal because it might not always be the same price. He okay, might not so always want to buy the up. same quantity. You like to switch up on people. No, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. The deal is what I'm it is. I'm all about consistency. Right. So if I, if, I, if I buy corn from you for $10 and I come back tomorrow, you're like, oh, I want to love it. But maybe my, maybe my costs have changed. In a day you fuck with me or not? Gas prices are soaring. 
What's it got to do with me? That's your gas. If we're going to do business, then my costs are going to have to be but, important to you in so some you're, meaningful you're way. So you a switcher? Oh, I switch it up. Right. Yeah. It's crazy world. <laughs> Y'all watching this party? He switched. Look, that's why you switched this up too, huh? So you got to the point in your comedy career where you felt like you could not only have your own merch, but you could go out and get a Roddy Rich haircut. How's that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I just I seen your hair when you was like <laughs> dancing around in the Walmart and shit. I'm like, damn, he he came through and got but a cool really, haircut. Is it really a Ronnie Rich haircut or is I it mean, just a haircut? I'm, I don't have like a, a PhD in like different kind of rapper haircuts, but mm. you know, I just I, I feel like you you know you're coming through. Oh, a little so bit you extra masturbate finesse. the haircuts? No. Okay. No. Uh, what are you jerking off to? Uh, usually game bang. Gangbang porn or like gangbangers. <laughs> you watch some fucking YouTube videos. Watch an O Block documentary. <laughs> I can hear them laughing out there. <laughs> hey, that was pretty good. That was pretty fucked up. Yeah. You gonna edit that out? No. Oh not. fuck. The more offensive, the better. Yeah. Nah, that was actually crazy as fuck. You got any like offensive, like really offensive jokes that you've been thinking about workshopping no, that you want to let off I don't, here? The only thing that people do, they say talk about my agony, but they act like I went to God and be like, give me that fucked up skin. But they, like, they think you should have jokes about your own acne? No, no, no. I'm saying that's the only thing that people did. Like That's the only thing they ever said about me. Uh -huh. But the thing is, you got a problem with something, the best thing is to get money and get it fixed. So that's the part, and it's a documentary of it. About your acne treatment? Yeah. You made a documentary about it? Yeah, I'm doing it right now, so I'm gonna sell it probably in like, probably like six years. I'm probably gonna get six million for I'm, sure. I'm a, a six year acne documentary. This is ambitious. Yeah, your skin doesn't really look that bad to me. Although, no, it's not. I, I guess mean, I can see you had some. Yeah, acne, you. But. You know, it's 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 a black people thing. Okay. Yeah, because white people don't really look at skin. Y'all look at what's in your heart. <laughs> Are you white? <laughs> Aren't we great? <laughs> For the white? best. Am Are I you? white? Yes. Oh, okay. Because you change your colors with your tattoos, so you can actually be somebody else. I know. And sometimes when I come in and I like was on the beach the mm -hmm. whole weekend, I feel like my black friends are looking at me like... Do people come up and ask you for pictures? Yeah, sure. What do you, what do you feel like they do with them? Because I've never seen them on the internet. I don't know. I'd probably jerk off to them. Oh, I've never seen I've never like... seen them. Why would I? I've never seen pictures of you with fans. I assume it happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do I... You're not looking why for Why would them. I look for that? <laughs> why am I going to click on your tagged photos and be like, let's see if he's cracking for real? <laughs> you actually did it, didn't you? You ain't taking photos of the TGI Fridays. <laughs> actually, I did probably took, let's say, probably three hundred pictures with like three hundred different people. That's it in your whole life? Yeah. <laughs> Are you like inside a lot? That's like, I feel like I took three hundred pictures this month. Oh, uh, and it's what are they doing? Like with five them? days in, so it's probably a lie. But I mean, like, just imagine like me going home. Like, I just took a picture with like, well, I don't remember like, what. They gonna be like, I see him every day. You get like you like you accessible. I do like when we had the bike shop on Melrose. Mm -hmm. There were so many people taking pictures with me that it became like a meme. And I remember at one point somebody had a viral tweet that had like a couple thousand likes. That was like, "Your MCM flew to L.A. and went straight to the No Jumper store so he could take a picture with M22." And the, like the fact that like a couple thousand people liked that tweet, like that's how cliche it was to just go to my store and take a photo with me. I was like, "Damn, I'm whack." I need to just do something else with my life. So what's your best interview? Because I ain't gonna lie, some of your interviews just be like, let's like you just like so like dry. <laughs> Is this one of those? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let's get this shit over with. My shit is not dry, my shit is gas. What? I got that Zaza. No, I'm saying like honestly, like what is your best interview? Like, damn, this is like entertaining. With who? Who who is your best interview? If you can't say nobody's name. You ain't gave a fuck. They're all so hard. But you should go watch this one I did with this guy, Destiny. We did like three hours talking about politics and shit. It was fire. Also, it was like so, oh, see, that's something that you're into, politics. It was very different for me. I haven't right. really done a lot of content about that kind of stuff. Oh. Trans rights, stuff oh. like that. Yeah. I just feel like everybody just everybody, and you decide to do what you want to do. You believe in re reincarnation? No. Oh, me either. You don't? I mean, I do if you did. <laughs> I feel like, uh, you know, because right, some of the guys that I do the other podcast with, they're they're all talking about Gemini's. Like, oh, who's a Gemini? Oh, oh, he's a fucking Gemini. So he, he must be like this. I'm like, are you guys serious? Like, you actually think this? Yeah. You believe that shit too? Uh, not for real. Because if you line up 10 Gemini's, 
everybody gonna be on different shit. Yeah. So how are we alike? I feel like astrological signs are like strictly the territory of women. You said ass signs? Like astrological oh. or you know, your horoscope, all that. Like that's girl stuff. We can oh. pretend to be into it just to get some pussy. But you as know what's a man, crazy? You, speaking you of pussy, you can't do that. Speaking of pussy, you can fuck whoever you want, and six months later, you just won't even know how I feel. Is it really worth it? Mm, that's why it's nice having a video record of it. But still, you can watch a video. It's gonna make you even like want it more. Like, damn, I fucked that up. But if you get some good pussy, you think about it so much afterwards that you just drill it into your memory. Jerk off to it every couple of hours. Mm. Just really committed to memory in a way that you don't with other experiences you've had in your life, right? I think nobody minds their business. If they did, they wouldn't know that they're getting cheated on. Minding your business when it comes to getting cheated on, I mean, is that even really classified as minding your business? Right, because you're getting into their business. You ever caught a girl cheating on you? I ain't never got cheated on. I mind my business. Really? Now you look like Antonio Brown. <laughs> Put that shit on. <laughs> <laughs> How you feel about that dance when you do it? I mean, it's viral. You think he hired an agency to come up with that, or you think that was just out of his own brain? I think he just did what he want to do. Mm. I fuck with Kanye. You do? Yeah. You like that diarrhea tweet? Nah, really, I don't even be reading for real. <laughs> that was fake, for the record. Uh, how but you know? He came out and announced that. Do you believe you start rumors? Me? Yeah. Mm, I try to mostly deal with facts. I mean, but you get people in a room and they talk about shit and you start the rumors. Well, there's a lot of pressure on you to not be spreading rumors when you're a podcaster, but then at the same time, you're just kind of like thinking out loud about random so shit. So do you, you ever know? be like, damn, I should edit this out? Or are you like, fuck it? Uh, here and there. Mm -hmm. I don't hold myself to a very high standard. Mm. Would you be a very good detective? One through 10, what would you get yourself? As a detective? Yeah. I actually think that's something I would be horrible at. But you do interviews. You know what questions to ask. Yeah, but like problem solving and having to like figure out the answer to something. I don't know, man. That just sounds I really feel like you'd be a good detective. Good detective. You think you would? Yeah, I would. Like if there was a murder and you had to figure out who did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what the fuck am I going to do? Just walk around the neighborhood, knock on some doors like, hey, you see anyone shoot anyone? They're going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, that's, that, that, that's why when I think about being a cop, I actually kind of feel No, a detective and cop is two different things. Right, but it's just like... that's. Who's going to give you this information? How you feel about Ice-T if he heard you say this shit? Because he's on a TV show where he plays a cop, you think you would have a dog no, a in this fight? No, a detective. A detective, right? Yeah. You think you'd have a dog in this fight? I mean, I feel like you just... You, you just, think Ice-T would be a good detective in real life? Let me tell you something. The world need to know it's about getting love. When you love, your shit go far. When you love? When people, when you're lovable, you got to be lovable. Well, people have to like you, yeah. Yeah. That's the shitty part about being like an influencer. Yeah, because you got, well, no, actually, it's like you didn't ask for what you got right now. You just did what you want to do and it built. Yeah, but. I you mean, didn't do it for the people. You actually did what you wanted to do. And then you but see it. when you make content, you go out of your way to like get this kind of, that's why I have to take a photo with everybody who fucking asks me unless there is like a real reason not also, to. Also, you don't care about your photos you take with your fans. No, I don't care. Y'all hear that? You ain't going to edit that out, are you? <laughs> yeah. This guy right here. Don't hey, I'm it. taking those photos, <laughs> buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm taking those photos. Have you ever just like took did an interview with somebody? You like, I'm gonna take this shit out, and this is gonna make them look like a goofy. Take something out because it was gonna make them look like no, no, no. Like if they I'm, look like a goofy, I probably want to leave it in, right? No, no, no. I'm saying like take out answers, like when you say something, or probably like edit it, like edit that so good, and make it like a much dank clip. Yeah. No. Oh. That would be unethical. Mm hmm. I feel like it's dope. That's what would make it like, I don't remember saying that shit. Why would anybody want to do this podcast if I was going to misrepresent what they were saying? Mm, they almost say misrepresentation. You just took out shit that you wanted to take out because it's your shit. Yeah, but if I remove context, I mean, that would be awkward. Mm -hmm. For somebody like you, if I were to just chop up your words, make it look like you were saying something gay or whatever. <laughs> do, have you ever seen Elephant Fuck? No. Oh, me either. Is it wild? I just wonder how it happened. Let me tell you about the one and only time in my life that I've searched up animal porn on the internet. Is uh, when I first got a cat, when I was like 22 or 23, uh, I went on a trip and my girl was telling me that my cat was fucking my other cat. And uh, I, I wasn't there to see it. And she was like describing how 
traumatized she was by watching my cat fuck this other cat. And I was like pissed off because I was so into my cat. I didn't know what it would look like for a cat to have sex with another cat. So I actually went on YouTube and I searched cats having sex. And it was pretty much gave me an idea of what it would look like. Dude, well, you, you still watch you still watch this shit? No, it was more of a one and done type thing. You watch anime porn? I've never really seen it. I've seen some like photos online, but I'm not really searching it out. So if you've seen it, they kind of recommend it, and God's trying to tell you to come over here. You gonna go? What? Or you gonna go over there to the anime porn? I think I would rather jerk off to actual real life women. I'm as just opposed saying, to just drawings. try something different. You like new mm. shit, don't you? Not that new. You changed your setup. Yeah. But I don't think I'm really trying to fuck with my jerk off regiment. Mm. Well, you you feel like there's anything out there sexually that you haven't explored yet that you might like? Mm. I just like what I already been doing. So some shit I don't like to change a lot. What have you been doing? Uh, <laughs> <your> actually, <laughs> uh, you know, I just honestly, I be twi- I, I do a lot of Twitch and shit. Like playing a game like gets me. Oh okay. Like it makes me feel good. So you've been enjoying that. You got a nice little community. They're talking to you while you're playing the game. What, mm-hmm. what game are you playing? My eye fucked up. <laughs> I actually like to play. I actually be playing Madden and shit like that. Okay. On my spare time. You know? Like, if you think about it, like, I feel like when you do get a name, they put you up here. Like, they just feel like you should be this type of person. It's like, I'm not ready to be up there. Hmm. You know? Being on Twitch makes you feel like more of a normal person. Yeah, with my people that actually love me and want yeah. to, like, talk to me. Because it's so time-intensive to sit there for a couple hours watching somebody on a live stream that if they're fucking with you... Like, if somebody... People come up to me sometimes and they say, hey, I watch you play poker on Twitch. And I immediately feel, like, a lot closer to them than if they were to be like, oh, I watch your interviews. Just because way more people watch my interviews. It's like different apps give you different type of people. Like TikTok people mm. are there for you. Instagram people are like, we just want to see, we want to see all the good shit, nothing bad. Facebook is yeah. like, we we here, like messy family. And then you got like, you know, different apps give you different level. Twitter is like you're on a whole different world. It's just vibes. Different vibes. That's what all, isn't that crazy that all these social media platforms are supposed to be so different? But they've really all basically amounted to like a place where you can just post a video and some words, and the main difference is the vibe. Have you ever interviewed somebody from Kansas City, Missouri? Tech Nine. Oh, you did? Y'all got an interview? Yeah. Yeah. But I had somebody the other day too. Who am I thinking of? Fuck. T. Rail, but he's from Kansas. I never had him on. There was somebody fucking recently. Ah. Oh one. yeah, I know you talking about Sleazy. There you go. Yeah. That's it. That's my boy. You fuck with him? Yeah, we actually watched your interviews before he came out here. That's crazy. You were with him watching my interviews? Yeah, before he came out here. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and he came out. That was uh, around the time. Yeah, we went, picked out the outfit and shit for it. You believe in his career? Yeah, I believe in it. You got it? He got the sauce? I actually actually do. It's just one thing I have to say is some people let the fans control their career Mm. because talent is talent, but hard works beat talent. So as long as you got talent, you keep working. You can do what the fuck you want to do. Okay. I got a cousin right now. You heard him. His name is Up and Coming. No. Right. He's still coming. Okay. Yeah. When you look at Sleazy World Go, mm-hmm. it's like so different being a rapper and being a comedian coming up in the game because they just want to hear you have fun, silly conversations, lighthearted shit. They don't want to see you acting tough or anything like that. And then meanwhile, I mean, he came out. Infinity guns in the video, shit like that. Talking about crazy ass spin the block type shit. Mm-hmm. Really, two different careers incentivize you in such different directions. Mm, yeah, and you know what's crazy? A pinch of that career and a pinch of my career, like they all step into it. That's your baby mama calling? No, I was just looking at the time. Oh, you ready to go? No, no, no we got like a half hour. Oh, damn! I ain't really want to with you that long. <laughs> <laughs> You ever nah. seen a white baby before? Yeah, I have. I actually got white. Uh, I got white family. That's your baby. Yeah. You sure? <laughs> Pretty. Not sure. like like I'm just saying like sure like you happy sure. Right. Not like that. You know, like in a black culture, like the mama gotta like see the baby. Like they gotta be like, you got blood tests on that baby. Like is she yours? It happens a lot. Right. And it's just like the baby can't talk. I don't know if she's mine. Like me with my kids, I want to hear the baby call me dad dad. 
And that's when I know we got a relationship. Until the end, it's not mine. I feel like if the baby's dad was someone else, the baby would still call you dada if you were around in the fatherly role. Nah, then that baby starting rumors that definitely don't want shit. That's, I don't want that around me. A one-year-old is not an authoritative source on. I mean, you're saying that. Don't doubt him. Now, you a baby doubter? Oh, yeah. That's fucked up. But my kid looks just like me, so I wasn't too worried is about it. Is it really about just looking just like you or really being from you? Well, if it comes down to it, I am happy to do a blood test. Mm. If so you want to take blood from the baby? <laughs> no, me, I would be the one donating the blood. Uh, if my kid came out looking like Michael B. Jordan, for sure, it would have been some vibes in the emergency room. Why not just be there and just be, hope you got Michael B. Jordan? Oh, I'm going to be taking care of Michael B. Jordan's kid. I'm going to be getting cucked for him for a period of time until those test results come in, and then I'm out. You ain't going to have me changing no dirty diapers on some superheroes' kids. I mean, technically, if you change the diaper before it get dirty, it ain't necessarily got to be dirty. That makes you nasty if you wait for it to get dirty. <laughs> so where's the shit supposed to go? <laughs> you got to change the diaper after it gets dirty. Not necessarily. Now, it's not like a table where like you, no, I mean, you, you, you can doctors? clean a table whenever you want, but if there's food on the table, then you really need to clean. How do you feel about doctors? Um, I think that they are an important part of our society. Yeah, you don't give a fuck. No, I mean. Curing disease seems important. Yeah. Sometimes they start rumors. Certain doctors might start rumors. Yeah. I don't know that that's specific to doctors. I would think that, if anything, the doctoral community probably aren't the biggest gossips. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you can be in church for like nine years and read the same book, Bible. Right. I haven't read it. I'm just saying, but just think about it. It take us nine years to read this same book. Like, when's the new one coming out? Right. But, I mean, you never got the cliff notes for the Bible or anything? There's, There's got to be, like, a couple, like, big stories in there that are the main important ones, right? Reading a book for nine years is insane. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm yeah. assuming you believe in God. I believe in I any- don't. So, for me, yes, it's insane. Yeah, I just believe anything. Like, if it's a name, I believe it. Like, I'm not here to discriminate or take, I put energy in to be like, I don't believe it. Like, it's just like, okay, it's here. Like, it's, right. I believe in aliens. I believe anything. I believe, like. Anything that just got in a name to it. Just any any noun. Anything yeah, anyone has thought up ever? What about like an orc? Yeah. So like mythical creatures that you know don't exist. You still believe I in mean, them you're saying that, but that's you that's your, that's your opinion though, because aliens are probably here. But there is objective fact. Right. I'm just saying I just I just I, that's me, I mind my business. There aliens are not here. You don't be minding your business. I'm gonna tell you something. During the 80s and the 90s, you would constantly see videos, clips coming out of aliens. Look at this UFO. Look at this spaceship. In the years since, in the year 2020, how often do you see a video where you're like, oh, look, that's a UFO? Almost never. Want to know why? Because everybody has high quality fucking video capabilities right there on their phone. So if there were aliens on Earth, they would be pretty easy to document. And the fact that you never see UFOs anymore, I think, is a pretty good sign. I'm still fucked up on how Keith Chief got famous for saying bang bang. Keith Chief? Yeah. Chief Keith. I mean. Bang bang. See? You see, I just said the name and you corrected it. Well, I said it exactly the way he says it. Bang, right. Bang. Right. That's mm-hmm. the old O block, though. I just say, like, honestly, I feel like you should start going to the hood and interviewing people. I went to O block. But I'm saying outside of other shit, too. I've been to a lot of hoods in LA. But I'm saying, is it on your page? Like you just like interviewing, like taking this out and interviewing the hood, like Memphis, blah, blah, like getting hood documentaries. Yeah, but usually I want to interview like a specific person and not just random people. Oh, you're a cloud chaser. No, it's just when you interview a random person, like what are they going to talk about? I mean, hey, I ate a bagel this morning. No, because they probably got some shit to talk about. They story matter. That's what Softwood Underbelly is for. Have you seen that channel? Uh-huh. They interview like a lot of prostitutes and meth heads and, but they matter. That, that's said they matter too. They like, ma- yeah, yeah. But but see the thing about it is when I started this podcast, we were downtown, right by Skid Row. Mm. So we're surrounded by bums and homeless people and drug addicts, whatever. And I'm doing the podcast. I'm interviewing rappers for the most part. You know, BMX riders, porn stars, whatever. And people would always comment and say, "You should interview a bum. You should interview a homeless guy, etc." And I always just 
didn't even think about it because why would I do that? But now this dude, Mark, he has a whole channel that's just him interviewing basically like street people. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. I, 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 is it mean to call somebody a bum? If they really like, because if you ask them, what do you label yourself? They might not label themselves that. Because what if they want to be in that position? Why are you language policing yourself? Explain. You don't have to do this. Explain it. Because I feel like normal working class guys like you are so scared of offending woke people that you don't even want to use a word like bum. I mean, I'm sorry, you're a bum. Like, if you fucking live on the street, you're a bum. This is just like a word that I've but been using my whole life. But what if that's somebody's fucking career? Like, I want to not do shit and be outside. That's cool. You're a professional bum. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm I'm really good with, like, saying what it is. Right. Like, well, no, I am, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm a gentleman. I'm you're a, questioning I'm a, everything. No, I'm not. I'm a gentleman. You're denying reality. I'm a man. You a man. I know for that for sure. Well, you haven't seen my penis yet, but. Right. I don't need to. You can check under the hood if you want. Uh, Hi. How you doing? She coming in here with us? No, but she came in with glasses and she's wearing like skims, I think. Yeah. Or some kind of like earth tones, neutral. She definitely handsome. Handsome? Yeah. <laughs> I think you, you, you can say that about a woman, but I don't know what the context. I think it has like a different meaning. Nah, you ever had a guy call you handsome before? Gina Views says she's not a dyke. Don't Strapped up like a dyke? I actually fuck with dykes. I actually got into, me and her had a little relationship. Her? No, a dyke. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What kind of relationship? You were just homies? No, nah, I fuck with her. But in a non-sexual way? or she, nah, she we, needed we, some we dick? we fuck sometimes. All right, okay. Yeah. I mean, I was the only one doing it. It's got to be weird to be a dyke. Not necessarily. She Nobody knows like, what to think of you. No, they do. She just like boy clothes. You know when I've seen how the dykes move is when I've been at uh, the strip club. Oh, I heard not to call them dykes. So I thought they called something else. We can't let the the left control us. What they call? I forgot what they want to be. We called. can't let Joe Biden lesbians. Butch dykes. Mm. Lesbian. <laughs> yeah, I I just I just got to think of like all right, like if that's what you want to carry yourself as, I respect it. Would you call someone retarded? Mm. No, nah, because I really feel like if we normalize them for being them, then that's what they just want to do. But I feel like when somebody come in a room with different type of special needs and we like act different with them, that makes them not feel different. Right. Treat them like normal. You people. definitely shouldn't call a retard a retard. But what if like your homie is just acting like an idiot? You can call him a retard. I mean, behind closed doors, but it's still like a nice word to but say. Why are we censoring ourselves in public? We're better than that. Yeah, I understand. But if it was if it was more me, I'd be able to speak up. But I understand my place, and I'd just be like, "No, yeah, you're not trying to lose your brand deals." Mm, I ain't even got none. Yeah, you 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 were dancing with a dog or something. No, I ain't dancing with a it's dog. Like a dog food ad? What was it? No, I'm not that. You got the wrong comedian. No, I I, I watched you on some interview last night. And there was something about like you. You got seven thousand dollars for some some ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I add in I'm a trying deal. to figure out where that seven thousand dollars at. A ad and a deal is two different things. Okay, like it's like I'm not getting paid from over and over. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. What would be like the ideal brand deal for you? You think the ideal brand deal for me would be like Skittles. You're you're that into Skittles? Not for real. I just like that they never gonna go out of style. Or deodorant. Uh, I said not deodorant, but Doritos. Because they never going nowhere. Well, there's a lot of products that probably aren't going anywhere. But I know for sure they ain't going nowhere. Well, why is like no toilet paper company tapped in with the influencers? Because they gonna you got they gonna wipe shit regardless. Yeah, right. It's the same thing where like you've seen Backwoods do some marketing, mm-hmm. but then at the end of the day, it's like if, if it seems like everybody's just gonna use your product anyway, so why even bother? Why not just let everybody do it and right. fuck marketing? So how you thought about just like I'm no longer doing interviews. I just want to talk. I'm going to just talk to y'all to the camera. Just me? Yeah. That's a specific skill, being able to sit there on Twitch or whatever and just talk into the camera. I think I could do it a bit. I mm-hmm. don't think it's – I think interviewing people is probably more my skill. My. So what would you give it, one through ten? This interview? Yeah. Zero, I mean, no. Zero. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you because I'm a, I'm a Bob. I'm this a reminds Bob. me of when I interviewed Joe Budden. It was about but, but Joe Budden was kind of like being himself, and you're like kind of playing a character of like being like a difficult interview. You think so? A little bit. What if I'm off a perk? 
That's lit. I'm not. I don't do drugs though. Pop perk. You want perk? You got perk. So I feel like I sometimes like I, I got a people skill where I can get in where I fit in, and sometimes I just like if you don't talk about it, it won't be said. So all the shit we talking about is because I want to say you say. And because you're on a perk. Nah. You ever? You never did one. I did one one before, and I thought she had bed bugs, and I was itching, so I said I'd never take it again. The itching. Yeah. <laughs> you thought she had bed bugs. Yeah, I popped one with her, and I was like, I gotta go. <sighs> wow. So I never really did. I don't smoke weed because I don't like coughing. Uh huh. I start drinking. I don't really like to drink, and I I don't like strong shit. And then I order La Marita and the girl be like, "That's a that's well, a bitch drink." What is wrong with us as human beings that we're just constantly searching for different chemicals to introduce into our body to make us feel a certain way? When in reality, if you were to just ignore all of them, you'd probably just be fine, right? I can't even imagine what the cameraman's doing right now. How do you capture this? Nah, that's real shit. <laughs> but when we do go to the hospitals, they start off with drugs with that because the doctors say we need it. That's mm. why they start rumors. But they don't give you weed in 40s. They do give you like type of weed. What? At the, at the hospital? Yeah. It's something different, bigger than weed. Well, yeah. They, they'll give you stuff stronger than weed, yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying like... When I was a kid and you go to the hospital and they get you hooked up to the methadone drip or whatever, when I was like, you know, getting my fucking broken arm dealt with when I was a kid, it's not like I was thinking like, oh, I could I could get this drug on the black market and then I could do it all the time and I would feel great. It took a long time. Yeah. It took like a cultural influence. It took like future telling me to do drugs to really want to give it a go. Yeah, influence. That's what that's called. I blame him. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I, I blame you for getting influenced by somebody that, that they was doing what they wanted to do. And why shouldn't he be able to make songs about whatever the fuck he was doing at that time in his life? But I just I, remember one time, fuck, what was the bar? There was one bar in this future song where he just made popping a Zan sound really cool. Right, but that's what he wanted to do. So you were influenced by him. Yeah. That was your decision. Now, I was a kid. I was only like 31. Why they call Lil John when he's not little? <laughs> he can call himself whatever he wants. You're funny, Marco. But I'm not funny to everybody. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. You don't have to call me that. I trying to get in there. Yeah. I mean, Dave Chappelle's not funny, Dave. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's pretty funny. This funny Mike. Yeah. There's like a whole funny family out there. Funny is like the Lil and the Young of rappers, but for comedians. Maybe. Are you, what In the industry, what do you feel like get more money? Athletes, rappers, comedians, who do you feel like if they had to do a salary cap, how would it go? I'll I wait. That's, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Because we all know that there's like insane amounts of money that can be made at the top of the field. Like you can become a billionaire being a rapper, right? We right. see, but I'm saying if Kanye we came together, it. but then like basketball players, like I guess there's some best other basketball players who are billionaires, like just barely, yeah. But like, I mean, how many NBA players are there, and how you know, like who's going to be the richest on average? I'm not sure. You got soccer too. You got baseball. You got the porn industry. You got interviewers. There's a lot of ways to make money. Yeah, right. Who's the probably richest interviewer? Bet you don't know that. In rap or No, in just in general. Everything? I'm saying in general. Probably Joe Rogan. No. Oprah. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> she got a billion? She does, I think. Yeah. If, it would like if Joe Rogan had a billion, we would never know. Also, there's no way he has a billion. Like comedians is somewhere. Kevin Hart got hella money. Yeah. Eddie Murphy. Do you think like Kevin Hart gets a lot of backlash at this point, right? Like I don't think so. It's weird, though. When I'm looking at Twitter, sometimes I'll be like, damn, the whole world hates Kevin Hart? That's what you on Twitter. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's a Twitter vibe. I don't be on Twitter. Right. Twitter at the dark, yeah. But I'm not there reading about what they said about Kevin Hart. But I want to know. I want to know who's hated, and I want to know who hates them. But does it really matter? Yes. Mm. I want to know how people feel, even if I think they're insane. Mm, so you be commenting on the shade room and shit? No. Maybe for some clout. Maybe if I see no, a good I'm opportunity saying, gotta, to make a little joke and some on followers. Not your page. But like from your fake page? Uh, no. Oh. 
I never got into that. I hear about people like threatening each other with fake pages and stuff. But it's okay. Never... It won't come out. No, I'm never. Oh, okay. I've been on the internet too long. I log into a site once. There's no fucking way I'm logging out mm -hmm. to do something else. So you ever been like, oh, let's just get this fucking interview over with? Yeah, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> nah, but I feel like that's dope. And like, honestly, get you far. What? Being honest. Like, it's just okay. No, no, this is fun. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just saying in general. That's the whole thing, though. It's like, I couldn't do another version of your Say Cheese interview where I just get you to tell mad stories about, like, your blue-collar worker days. Uh -huh. It's already out there. We got to do different shit, right? Yeah. But some shit, you can reimburse it because you learn more and learn how to talk. But I, I also feel like you let Sean Cotton do a normal interview because he's, like, a, a cool black guy. And you're like, no, this dude's white and he has shorts on. I need to torture him. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I like everybody. Because okay. honestly, you just a soul in a body. You rent that body. That ain't shit. A white body. A colonizer body. I mean, like I said, still a body. Fat body, skinny My body. My body. Was that good? What's your soul? What's your color is your soul? That's what really matter. Tan. Right. Right. So honestly, I feel like I'm, I do a good job to make people think what it is and it ain't that. Explain. Like you think you know what's going on. Because you, you don't. Because I don't even know what's going on. Is this what it's like dating you? Like just That's why probably why I'm playing single. Playing head games with a person? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm playing head games. Are you addicted to pussy? You said, do I eat pussy? Are you addicted to it? And break down your addiction. What does that mean to you? I think the moment I realized I was addicted to pussy was when I was doing a bunch of traveling over the course of a couple of weeks and I didn't have sex for a couple of weeks. And I just started to realize that like the desire to fuck was building up in my brain. This is probably 10 years ago. And that like, I was like, like my horniness, it wasn't like it just hit a level and just stayed there. It was like, no, the longer I didn't get laid, like I, I just became like really horny, like put to the point where I might've fucked like a crackhead at the gas station or something if it came down to it. So this is like a character, like a cart, like if you're that superhero, like horny man. I don't know if I would call it a superpower. If anything, it's more like an illness, debilitating right. illness. So you're walking around like in a dick costume, like, what the what, what fuck? No, I was going to the gas station and I was getting topped off by the bums. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. No, no, you were. Yeah. All right. You ever fuck a homeless person or no? What? A homeless person? Yeah. I was homeless getting pussy. At what age? Yeah, 17. So why were you homeless? Because I didn't want to stay in the house. Well, that's kind of different. That's I'm just... saying I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't afford it. That was the reason why I didn't want to stay in the house. But your parents had a house and you could have stayed there? Hey, I just didn't want to be a mama's boy. You're like, I'm going to go harass people at Walmart for my Vine I, compilation? See, harass, see, harass is just like when you're bothering somebody, like keep picking at them like harass, like to a point. What I do is conversation and I bring stuff out of people a moment. I seen you really ruining some people's days in that what? Walmart. You honestly, he was not ruining nobody's day. You're hurting feelings. <laughs> These cameras working? <laughs> no, they're just there. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so we doing this shit for nothing. Nah, but all right, you know Gideon? Yeah. I love Gideon. His you content's bring him funny on here? as fuck. He's already been on here. But uh man, sometimes it's like when I really think about like how crazy the concept is of just doing skits or like doing doing pranks and just like going out in public and just, just tormenting people it's a wild you using the it's wrong, a wild come up but you're using a word that's just like i don't see it as like that and it's okay because that's what you see like there's it, levels yeah like it's, not, it's, some it's, shit. it's not like, like you smash somebody over the head with a vase or anything yeah like let's say if you put if i did something to your mom in one of these videos mm. they'd be like oh damn he got you mama like ha right. ha ha but then it's some shit like you disrespecting my mama like you forced her to be somebody she didn't want to do. So that's what Gideon did is he was in Beverly Hills and my boy who does podcasts on here, T-Rail, his, I guess, wife, fiance, I don't know where exactly where they're at, but she was there in Beverly Hills doing a photo shoot for their store. And so they got two models. She got some super gay guy and they're just like taking photos of these girls walking on the steps or whatever. And they don't know Gideon. Gideon walk, walks up and he's like saying that he just hit a thousand followers on tiktok oh, i seen and, that yeah, yeah i seen that yeah and uh it was kind of exploded he was really fucking with her and he called her a big body 
That, oh. that was the the bar that kind of like stood out in everybody's mind. Although, to be fair, he apparently says big body to a lot of people about right, a lot of right. things or whatever. But yeah, that, that gave us a window into what it would be like to have a, a famous YouTube prankster use your baby mama as the butt of the joke. Right. How do you feel about that? T-Rail, I think, took it in stride. But also, one time, T-Rail got donkey of the day, and he told Charlamagne he was going to kill him. So he, wow. doesn't, he doesn't always take it in stride. So did they make up? I don't think they've ever had a conversation. But uh, he got donkey of the day back in the day because there was a video of his fiance Heather, who's, who's great. Shout out to Heather. And she was holding her baby backstage at a Tiger concert because he used to be like Tiger's dude. Like they right. toured together, helped him run his, everything business-wise, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's at the show holding the baby. And Charlemagne talked about it on the radio, talked about all these ratchet ass hoes bringing their babies to the to the Tiger concert and yada, mm -hmm. yada, yada, which was like really kind of judgmental because I guess the baby actually had earplugs in, they're backstage at the show. This right. is basically the dad's job, you know? Right. So it's not like she just was going to the show. The information was, that wasn't put out. Exactly. But so then Tyrell, who in his own way is from the streets of LA, let's just put it at that, he went on Instagram wildin'. Basically threatening Charlemagne, and then Charlemagne gives him the donkey of the day and taps that. So oh. he apologized to the girl for, to Heather for calling her a hoe, I think. Yeah, but then he also told T. Rowe he was a donkey, I guess. Yeah. So that was kind of a window into that. But also, we was we were homies with him for like a year or two before we found out he got the donkey of the day. I'm like, how the fuck are you hiding that? How did you keep that a secret up until now? You hear somebody locking their car out there? Yeah. Have you ever seen? It's kind of awkward. So like, beep, 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 beep. what do you see yourself in three years? Three years? I don't know. Probably sitting right here. Probably <laughs> doing this. <laughs> <Right>. Realistically. <laughs> it's Where do you see yourself? I actually see myself. I want to give away a car every month. Away a car to some, like teenagers that's working in jobs like fast food. To so give away like lit. really shitty cars. Huh? Like an eight hundred dollar car? Nah, nah, nah or a nah. smart car? No, nah, just something decent for them. Okay, decent is just like so. I'll give away a car every month to like teenagers that's trying to give them plans to get up. But are you future. trying to get sponsors for the cars? Because isn't that what like David Dobrik's doing? He's giving away Teslas, but he's getting given the Teslas by the mm -hmm. companies and shit. That would be dope. But I wouldn't say trying because that means that's what I'm going for. Okay. I'm gonna make it happen regardless. But if Tesla reaches out, you'll be like, okay, yeah, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Why does everybody got to do charity these days? It's all about... I wouldn't say charity because, look, this is what it is. Me, when I worked at a job, it was hard for me because I didn't have a car. So nine times out of ten, if you can help the future or the people up and coming and give them a step up, some people are going to make the right decision. Some people are going to make the wrong one. You give somebody a car, they might sell it. You give somebody a car, they might get farther and get a new, better job. So yeah, Here's wanna... the thing. You pay taxes? Yeah. That's kind of like charity, right? Do you really need to give more money? Yeah, because at the end of the day, you can't die with it. And then at the end of the day, it's about making people feel good. If it makes you feel good, I'm hoping that. that I'm kind of far away from dying. Yeah, I mean, I ain't really worried about it. You're not worried about dying? I mean, I feel like it might be something else afterwards. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you not know. But we don't know. But before we got here, what was we doing? My ideal death scenario is that I die, and then I get to rewatch my whole life, like in a movie theater, and they got a bunch of good snacks. And you can kind of like in there? re watch like the highlights Who's of your whole life. Who's going to be in there? Um, all of the great dictators throughout history. The people, probably the people that don't fuck with you, like, this is where you fucked up. Mm. No, I'm picturing it be more like a happy memory. Like, you're around all the people you like who are watching it with you. Yeah, but I'd be the one. If I was up there, I'd be like, I'm going to go in there and fuck with them. I'm going to be like, yeah, right there, that's the moment. No offense, but I'm not really considering that you're going to be there when I die and I'm watching the. The recap of my life. You never know. But maybe if we become more involved in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that if me and you see each other 20 years from now that we're going to remember that we did this? <laughs> I'm going to be on some 20 year shit. <laughs> it depends on what happens in our lives. That's for sure, too. Yeah. Right. Like, if you have like a weekend style, like career arc and you just become like the biggest star in the world, mm -hmm. it'll probably be pretty easy to forget like every interview that you did on the way to the top but i don't know no because all that stuff you're still gonna remember have right? you ever feel like you wasted an interview when they didn't do shit with their life you're like damn my interview that guy now he's not doing nothing 
No, nah, because you're always taking a shot, right? Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, no matter what happens to that person, mm -hmm. even if it's a sad story, like I've had interviews where I did with someone and their music career didn't take off, and then well, I interviewed a dude who his music career didn't take off, and then he ended up killing his girlfriend. Okay. And so it's all in the news for like a day. Everybody's like, holy shit, I can't believe this guy killed his girlfriend. And I had like the only interview with him or like the only interview that I knew of. And that was like, I mean, it's not like people were dying to see this interview about his life. But it kind of was like, well, anybody, you know, like it's it's it just feels important to have like a document of somebody's life, even if they don't end up doing a whole lot with their life. Yeah, I ain't good talking about dark stories. I'm so happy. You don't like talking about like the... No, I'm, sorry, I'm not good with like uh, talking about dark stories. Well, I did the interview before he killed the girl. I mean, yeah. he killed himself too. So. Yeah, but like you going deeper and deeper into it. I'm like, damn. That's yeah. all I say. Because I told you, I'll be minding my business. I got thick skin. Yeah. I, my, I girl, my girl always will be like, how are you watching someone get killed while you're eating breakfast? And I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing wrong with whatever you like to do. It's not like I'm going out of my way to find it, but it's like if I'm scrolling Twitter and there's a crazy ass shootout clip or whatever, I might just be shoveling bacon and eggs into my mouth while I watch somebody die over right. breakfast at 8.30 a.m. And that's why I say, like, if you like to do that, that's what you like to do. Like, uh. like I'm like, you know, I, it's just like with me, I just like to chill. Right. Yeah, and I just be like, what's next? Like, I like to laugh and like kind of yeah. like in... You like Michael Myers movies and shit like that? No. Oh. I've never, I don't even think I've ever seen a horror movie. So you, you know who Jason is? I've seen him. The right. red striped shirt. <laughs> Damn. What? I saw Scream 2. Yeah. That was the lamest scary movie ever. <laughs> and then he was scared with a knife. He get this close to you. I don't even know. I mean, it was, it was a long time ago. I mean, some movies shouldn't be a movie. Dave, you got a big shiny watch on, huh? Look at that. Yeah. It's actually like my first real watch. Damn. You should start bringing a diamond tester on here and test people like, oh, it was real, and then check it. <laughs> There's already about 50 YouTubers in Atlanta trying to make those, that type of content. But it's on here, though. This your <laughs> shit. Like, when I said it was yeah. real, you pulled it out, it'll be like, ah. yeah. <laughs> Is it real? I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If I knew it was fake, I wouldn't really care. I would actually kind of respect that. Yeah, because you're saving money. If you were like giving off the impression that you had a fifty thousand dollar watch, but you actually weren't, I, I would I would respect that. Right. Until future pulls up and takes a look at it and is like, get that garbage <laughs> out of my face. That was get funny. that out of here. <laughs> that was funny. That's why I don't want to wear jewelry anyways, because I seen like Future's jewelry and Drake's jewelry and all and Thug's jewelry, all these people. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Right, right, so right. I might not as well not even it's get started. It's different levels to shit, honestly. And it's what you really do. Like, it's like a nice one. Nice watch is okay for me. Like, that's it. Like, mm -hmm. and it's just like my goal is complete. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on. I'm trying to buy a horse and put mm -hmm. like get put rims get on insurance it. on it and shit. Put some rims on it. Yeah. I was thinking about getting like an anklet, like a little bracelet, little little anklet, and just rock that. Yeah, and you just get put, put my leg up while I was doing it. I, I heard, I heard you. Get, they be robbing people crazy down here for anklets. What if I was doing the whole interview like this? I mean, I feel like I'll be minding my business. <laughs> 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 like I'm a cool dude Like I'm the type good. of person I feel like Like Even if like I don't believe in like Getting robbed But somebody asks for something Like you can get it I'm like yeah Like you know Come get it Just I just hate people get aggressive If somebody's like Yeah I want that I'm like yeah Take it mm. I feel like rappers Gotta calm down With their attitude They should be normal Like hey I need that And I'm like okay Being a rapper Is like being a a warrior in society you can't take any disrespect you have to avenge people's deaths shit like that like the mm. like what people want from you as a rapper is insane so it, signing up to do it people should know what they're getting into i mean it's really what they allow them to happen to them like you know mm. and i feel like it's your part of your career we got jim jones we got drake people that just be in their own lane that you never hear stuff about in if you want to be in a mix, you can be in a mix. If you don't, you don't. So I really feel like you choose what you want to do. Like, I want to represent myself. I want people to know this. And because, say, back then, the internet wasn't really that popping, and you can hear stories. Right. You heard about 50 Cent in the game getting into it backstage, and G, you heard it was word of mouth. Uh -huh. Now some people know it's cameras, and it's like, I want this shit to go on camera. So it's really what you want to choose. But you know it's also, like, 
in like when that 15 game shit would have happened that would have been like 2004 or some shit 2005 right at that time if you're a rap fan how many rappers did you know about it wasn't that many compared to today where mm-hmm. it's like like even just the average rap fan is expected to know about like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rappers and realistically the average rap fan knows about a lot of rappers mm-hmm. who they have never even heard a song from or could not remember a song from. Mm, makes sense. And that's just kind of weird. Who's your it favorite is. rapper? Who do you listen to the most? I wouldn't say favorite. I like Kodak. Yes. I like King, who else? King Von, Lil Durk. So like that's Young like Boy. When, so that's like in your playlist when you get in your car. Yeah. Mhm. What about relaxing music? No comprende. I don't need to chill. Mm. I fucked my girl to a R and B playlist the other day though for the first time. How was it? It was cool. Do you feel like the R and B dude could have fucked your girl too? Oh well it started with Summer Walker, so that was good. Uh, if it went straight into Trey Songs, I don't know how I would have felt about that. Yeah, sex symbol. He's DM'd her a couple of times too. hmm So I would have known that she was thinking about that while well, why don't I was you just let him talk. <laughs> just let him talk. Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day it's their life. Right. It's actually like I almost felt bad for Trey Songs when I saw that he had DM'd her two different times because it made me realize that he's just like so horny out here. He's just DMing random girls and he didn't even realize that he because she already had a conversation on the first time, be like, "I have a boyfriend," and he was like, "Oh my bad, I thought you were somebody else," which is like definitely the lie that he just uses. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna take that out of the interview? No. Oh. Although, yeah, probably if I ever see him, it will be kind of awkward. Yeah. Well, a lot of girls have like tried to expose I mean, but it's okay. Him. But uh, is you on her page? My girl? Yeah. Not not on her porn page that much. But the page he DM'd her on. Mm, I might have been on there at the time. I don't See, know. See? That's important. I don't I don't like want her to post me on the but porn. But I'm just page. saying exactly so he didn't know. So I vouch for the people that Th- don't. And that's why I don't fucking care. Yeah. We, oh, I you the type that DM back like, "Get on my bitch inbox. <laughs> Pull up to my crib." You be DMing dudes back. How you ever? I'm done? gonna cut your head off with a sword, Trey Songs. Damn. I mean, just kidding. Go demonetize me, YouTube. Just take it out. <laughs> no, I was joking. Oh. Uh, so, have you ever DM the dude back like, "Hey, this like from our page," and be like, "Yeah, like, yeah, I'm gonna be in box." <sighs> be honest. When I first first was with her, mm-hmm. she got a DM from a. Uh, no, you ain't gonna say the name. I'm not gonna care. say. I don't care about names. I'm not that type of person. And I responded for her and I was like, yo, this is her boyfriend. Let me get an interview though. <laughs> How'd I go? You get the interview? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, because he wanted some pussy. You came in clock blocking. I know. Imagine going in for some pussy and all of a sudden you, you get an <laughs> interview request <laughs> as a rapper. You're like, I, I'm trying to get some pussy. I got plenty <laughs> of interview requests. This is a different kind of dynamic. This guy, you funny as fuck. I wish I got that interview though. That would be a great story. Yeah. You still could probably get it. Maybe. Yeah. I wish I could tell I will tell you off camera, but I wish I could say who it was because it's yeah. actually really funny. <laughs> it's like a really big name. Yeah, that's funny as hell. Yeah. Uh, that shit funny. Now nah, that's dope. And I just feel like if a girl got some type of showing like she got to do, I respect it. But if we don't, we don't know, we don't know. If we don't know, we don't know. Yeah, so I feel like I respect like I, res- I respect relationships. I'm not the type of nigga like, oh, yeah, fuck that nigga. That's, that's totally out of my character. Well, but you want to know a weird scenario that I'm frequently in is like I'll be at like a party in the like porn industry, right? And I'll see a chick with her boyfriend. And I just banged her like three days before. Oh, but they know that's part of the business though. Yeah, but it's still kind of like... You just wonder when you're like just talking to the the boyfriend. You're wondering like, do you care zero percent? Do uh, you care a hundred percent? Are you somewhere in the middle? Like like how how is this? Because sometimes so you can feel a little would you bit ask of them energy. Though? Would you ask? Hell them? no. Why not? Because it's like that would be like being an actor. So do you really want to know if you ain't asking the question? I actually would love to know, but I'm not. I don't want to know enough to make it awkward and ask. So you should have like an interview, like a separate YouTube, like and sit down right. with Inter- people. Interview the boyfriends. Yeah, that you girls are Yeah, <laughs> and just be like, how you feel? Like a lot of them aren't public figures. They probably don't really want to be out there like that. I mean, they are if they outside. What, at some party with like fifty people there. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. How many shits do you take a day? 
I really don't shit for real. And that's what my mama said I need to start doing. What? I guess you are pretty skinny, huh? Yeah. I don't eat for real. But what happens to the shit? It just like oozes out into your skin? Mm. Like nah. comes out of your pores? Like like what what could happen to the poop? Does it just dry up? It shrivels like fucking it's in the You could sun? go on Twitter and find out. You like watching nasty shit. I'm gonna see videos of your shit. Not mine, but just in general anybody. I've seen people eat shit on Twitter. That's crazy. It's out there though. Where'd you get your name from? The streets. Oh. Oh, let me ask you this question. Can you fight? No. So like how do you feel like in defense, like if somebody was to fight you, do you fight back or you just like get this guy off of me? Ga ga ga. So you instantly like ready to shoot. Like instantly. I think instantly. You look at me funny. That's crazy. You're dead. No, I'm just kidding. Um how do you feel like with your gun? Like, I feel like I still got like lead room. Like, I don't want to use that gun. No, but, I don't. Yeah, but I'm just saying, but some people in defense, like, you hit me, I got to use it. Right. Like, I could probably take an ass whooping and be like, all right, you got it. You want up. But if you come try to beat me up again, I got to use it. But you know what would be crazy? What if, like, me and you were standing out there and somebody just runs up, starts punching on you? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to kill him? Given that, I don't really know you like it's that. It's really the state rule, though. Right, but I'm saying, like, I wouldn't expect you to. Okay, the Quando Rondo, King Vaughn situation. Lil Tim killed King Von because mm -hmm. King Von ran up punching Quando. Now that's his boy. They're right. tight like that. So it's like I feel like when it goes to trial that there's a pretty good chance that he's gonna beat the murder. What if that happened to me and you? I don't know you like that. No, Am I, I still allowed to kill this dude just just cause It's really the state rule what they got up. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't expect you to because you got a lot of shit going but, on. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, this is yeah, kind of hypothetical. Be, but like Yeah, I wouldn't want you to. I'd be like, I, I, I look at you and I'd just be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like Catch this on camera. But, I mean, if, if you're in public and you have a gun on you and somebody starts fighting somebody else, are you just allowed to kill the aggressor no it's matter state. what? Like it's the state. It's up to the state. Yeah. That seems like a weird precedent. Yeah. Hmm. So you're going to get some pussy after this, I guess? Nah, i actually be chilling. Like, I'm actually going to go, uh, I was going to actually take some people out on the street, like, shopping, get their story, and try to leave some, like, some moments with them. So I know there's a lot of homeless people out here, so I want to take them shopping H&M and just see what I can do or give them a haircut, try to see if they can get a job interview afterwards. That's dope. Put them in a hotel. You should spend a night out on the streets with them. Yeah, I would, but I don't really like sleeping outside. That's why I got a house. That makes sense. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. This is where you're ending it? Yeah. You uh, could tell by the tone of my voice. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's like, damn, it's over. Dun, 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 dun. You like Family Guy, don't you? I mean, I haven't watched a lot of it, but mm. when I was younger, I watched a lot of it. You hard to read, though. Am like, I? you're just like, yeah, you have no emotion. I know. I'm a killer. Yeah. Yeah. But killers have emotions because you know they want to kill you. You wouldn't know if you want to kill. You have no emotion. Oh, I would know. If I wanted to kill you after this interview, I feel like I would, I would, they would probably be able to tell. That's also But you ain't killed nobody though before. No. Exactly. So how would they tell? But I can't admit to that anyway. There's no statute of limitations. Mm. Only thing you kill is pussy. Claw, claw, claw. That's true. <laughs> Beat it up. If you ever need somebody impregnated, mm -hmm. let me know. Call you to get my bitch pregnant. Or just a family member or anything. Like. Call you to get my auntie pregnant. <laughs> Well, if she needed some help, you know. Call you to fuck my. You got auntie. any family members who would be a good surrogate mother for me? My mama, she got some good pussy. She would carry, she would carry the baby for me. She got six <laughs> kids, by six different. You dudes. really don't need good pussy to be a surrogate. A sergeant, like in the army. You just gotta have fallopian tubes and shit. I don't even know what that means. It would be like if I were to come in a cup. And I then... thought we was ending this motherfucker. <laughs> That's a good point. Funny, Marco. You know what? You're going to see me again. You're going to be like, like, this, like, motivate me. Like, interviews should motivate people to get higher and higher because mm -hmm. it's like, damn. Like, I remember when I interviewed and we wouldn't shit. So, like, these should be motivation, like, to go up and go up in your career. Yeah. Don't let it get stopped and don't get, like, just just keep going up. You ever, like, watch old movies and you see, like, Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock? I, I hella thought this interview was over. <sighs> Can <laughs> oh, I just God. say, like, one thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do you watch old movies and you yeah. see like these mega stars playing that's, tiny ass roles in the movies? Prime example, Kevin Hart, Paper Soldier. Right. And that's kind of crazy because you're like, damn, like if they had known, they would have definitely cast this guy as the lead. But instead they got Dave Chappelle playing a crackhead. 
Yeah, The Rock. Prime example in the in the W. He's great. Like we would have made him the face, face, face. Even though he was the face, he did it for himself. Mm. I don't feel like they forced it on him. It's true. I think Triple H was the face. I hope your career rises to the point where you would never even consider responding to my DM. Mm. It's already there. So like once you was, I hope you get so lit you unfollow everybody. I mean, it's I ain't on Instagram though. Like mm-hmm. I got like I, I'm on TikTok. I like TikTok because it's actually funny shit on there. But if you really let you unfollow everybody, no, I ain't even about that. Da, 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 da. Interview's over. <laughs> yeah, he right. <laughs> so the camera's been cut. <laughs> nah. So y'all live tuned in with no jumper. Make sure you like. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to bell that zing. Ooh. And understand this: if you ain't here, then you ain't nowhere. You fuck. Motherfucker, and this is the best show ever. Make sure you come through with Deva. Yeah. <laughs> Coolest podcast in the world. Appreciate y'all. Funny Marco. And oh this is God. where we take a picture that you don't want to take. We're going to go out there and take it, and I'm going to hate every minute. Yeah, of it. I swear. You stand to the side <laughs> like this. That's my karate pose. Yeah, like you, like I don't fuck with you pose. That's like what I it just is. want about. Can you get Bow Wow on here? I guess. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Him. Get Bow Wow in here, please. All right. We're going to work on it for you. Yeah, for you too. Yeah.